guys, welcome back to Paul J Avery Outdoors. I'm um, taking the rig down this morning to CJ's to get a new exhaust manifold put on, get all new fan belts done, and that's it, that's happening today. But also, in the travels since last time I did a video, I've picked up a new canopy as the flexiglass canopy that I currently had, which is now the dog kennel. Uh, it, it was compatible with roof racks and supports, but uh, Flexiglass said they don't make them anymore, so I sort of went, well, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to make my own, or, uh, yeah, and I just didn't, I was sort of at a stand, so I didn't really know what to do, because I wanted roof racks to go on top to get a rooftop tent on there, so when we do our touring and overlanding and that sort of stuff, we can just sleep up top. And the canopy was 100 mil too short on the back end of it, so I lost 100 mil out of the back of the canopy. Um, ended up picking up a canopy off, I think it was just the four wheel drive, uh, sell swap and buy it in Toowoomba here, it was in Brisbane. Um, exact same color, well very close, silver, ARB, and all I had to do is get go to ARB and get a few um, extra things for it as the struts were done on it, um, I'm getting a lift up window on the left side of it, getting new seals around the whole thing and inner supports for roof racks and the actual roof racks themselves on top so we can um, put a rooftop tent on there. So I might just show you the old canopy that's sitting there and the new one that we got. Okay, so currently there's the old canopy that I had. Um, Shiloh's new dog house. It's actually really good, fits perfect up here. Um, and such, and cause, because it's winter, it's cold as well, but uh, the flexiglass canopy was really good. Um, the door and everything was great, and it was high on this top end of it and whatnot, but like I said, it wasn't compatible with roof racks. Well, it kind of was, but they don't make them anymore. There's the uh, 110 watt solar panel I had on top. Um, that's fine to run a 45 or a 55 litre fridge or something like that, but I've got a 95 litre Waco, so I need to work something else out because it's too small for that. Um, anyway, so there's the old canopy. It's not tinted, windows weren't tinted. You could see through the um, windows when it was on the street, um, even though it looks like it's pretty dark there now. It's only because it's on the ground. And there's that back end where I lost all the 100 mils out of it. So, so this uh, D22 runs a 1.5 by 1.5 canopy. Um, that's the new ARB canopy we picked up and picked it up cheap, I tell you what. There she is there. So what we're gonna get done to it is we get new ARB stickers put there, like the bubble stickers. They're going on there and there on both sides. Getting a lift up window for the left side here. And I really like these latches, they're a lot better than the old ones. So much better. And we're actually getting new struts for it as well, because these ones are no good anymore. And that seal there is getting replaced around the whole thing. Uh, and we're gonna wire in the brake light and the interior light right there as well, because having an interior light is awesome. On the last one, all I did was bloody buy one from Tent World and drill it through the canopy. And yeah, they're just getting the inner supports for it and the roof racks, and then we're gonna have a roof rack to a rooftop tent to sit on top there, but I've got my bike up there today because I'm gonna drop it off to the mechanic and ride home, need some exercise. So yeah, that's what we're getting done to the nav this week and next week. Um, just a quick little video. We haven't been doing a great deal because um, the restrictions only just lifting now, which is really good. First day back at the gym today and it was awesome. Um, had to walk around a little spray bottle and a bloody little bit of towel and wipe down every single thing. I uh, probably should do that anyway. And yeah, so it's coming up nicely. We're getting ready to go away. Um, we're not sure when yet. We're just gonna book the time in and plan the trip. We've already got the trip planned actually. So that's what's happening today. I'll take you along the journey and whatnot. Obviously, I'm probably not gonna take the camera just to get this exhaust manifold done because you're not gonna see much, but um, there was a major crack in it. So I'm just gonna get that changed today, but I won't take the camera anywhere today because I've got to ride my bike home and I don't really want that in the backpack on the ride home. As you can see, I got my backpack on, ready to rock and roll. 
And yeah, I think the next time I will see you is after the canopy is put on from, well after the canopy is getting all the stuff done to it at ARB, I'll make another video and then we'll catch up then. So I'll see you guys uh, next Tuesday. Righto ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about this pull out stove. So the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to keep the front of the Titan rear drawers incorporated into the system because I just wanted it to look the same as it did before I started to play with it. So essentially, I utilized the front of the drawer to be able to lock in the stove and lock in the drawer at the same time. So I'll pull the drawer out, um, we'll go through what I've done and why I've done it. So first of all, the drawer slides out like normal. So there's no change to that, apart from when you hit the latch again, I've incorporated another drawer slide with a three-quarter drawer in it to house the stoving. So I think it's a really great idea that the front of the Titan drawers locks in the stove and it also locks in the drawer. So essentially when I pull the drawer out, the stove's not going to come flying out. I can still use this as a worktop bench or anything that we would like to do. The second thing that we did was we made the drawer slide which is just made out of 12 mil plywood and a couple of rivets and screws and I've just put a bit of lacquer on it to make it a little bit of waterproof. So I've still got a little bit of work to do here but essentially um, it's all done basically. Third thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to gain back the space on the tailgate on top here because I lost 450 mils. So I've basically gained back the 450 mils plus more because at a total I've got a 700 mil alloy top on top of this drawer. Now the only problem with that was since I gained so much back I couldn't actually get the pots and pans out because there's only like a six inch gap between the end of the cupboard and the front of the drawer. So I've had to put it on hinges and make it pop up in like that. So now when you pull up you can pull your stove out, you can lift your bench up and you can get your pots and your pans and whatever you need from in the back of the drawer, which is quite a large space. I think there's about a foot and a half of space in the back there for pots and pans and whatever I'm gonna fill it up with. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna run into any problems where if I need to put a divider in here to keep the stove and the pots and pans separate, but I think when the drawer's stowed away, that will keep most of the stuff in the back there. So when you pull up, pull your stove out, and you'll still be able to get everything from the back there. It won't damage the front of this. So the fourth thing that we did is we made up a little spice rack out of seven mil ply that houses seven spices. Now, I've also put carpet on the back side of this, which holds our lighter for the stove, which I think is a great idea because I don't smoke anymore. Either does Kat and we very rarely have lighters in the car and sometimes they're very hard to find in my camping box. So it's good to have it on the back so you can just pull up, light your stove and she just lives right there. Now I'll do a walk around of what we've done. We've also done an alloy bench on the tailgate. I got rid of the wood and I got rid of the plastic protector on top because it allows me to carry two jerry cans of fuel in this side with that little bit of extra space that I have here. Also acts as a workbench, which I think is really great. So if we're pulling up, we can actually give this a wipe down with some wipes and we can make some sandwiches and have a coffee and that sort of stuff. So I'll get you a little bit closer. I'll pull the drawer out, show you what I've done because I've got a couple of extra latches in there that I haven't showed you at the moment. So we'll do that and then we'll go from there. Cheers. Okay guys, this is the alloy top on the tailgate that I made myself. I got a metal place in Toowoomba to cut it for me and I drilled and screwed it into my tailgate myself. Very easy and inexpensive thing to do. It cost me $28 plus I think the screws were $10. Now the drawer. Now the drawer pulls out like that. The Triton front locks in the stove just there. And if you hit that lock, lifts up, stove pulls out. So I've used the front of the drawer and the drawer itself to house the stove, which works really well. It's just a three burner companion stove, but you could use any stove. 
on the market in that setup. Also, here's our workbench on top that we gained the space back from the tailgate that we lost. It lifts up and just rests on the canopy. Also, the spice rack that houses seven to eight spices has carpet on the bottom of it and carpet on the side that holds our lighter. We'll get two or three of those and line them up. Also in the back there, that's where our pots and pans will live. The reason being for this latch on the front of the drawer is if we we're on a hill, the drawer would slide back in as I went the cheap way and I didn't buy the lockout slides. This just allows me to lock the drawer so it doesn't move. And also I have got a locking system on this one as well. keeps the stove from going in or out. So that's the car back kitchen for the Nissan Navara D22. There's my sink. There's 22 litres of water. We have the pull out stove, the workbench top, which hides all of our cooking utensils in the back there. Righto guys, just to end the video, I'm gonna go through the canopy um, and show you the work that ARB has done and then we'll do a little uh, shout out to the guys that helped us out. So basically guys, ARB has put in a lift up window for the passenger side of the canopy which is fantastic because it makes it really easy to get into the side to charge phones or anything like that or get into the fridge if the back of the car is occupied. Also we've got new bulb stickers for both sides of the canopy and like I said in the beginning of the video here we've got new struts for both sides and we've got new seals that go all the way around the canopy which is really, really good because it needed it. The seals are all falling off. We also got our interior light wired in. Also, also our brake light has been wired in, which I think is good too because the brake light sits a lot higher. So I feel a little bit safer that um, people behind me can see that light a little bit better. Um, and also guys, we've got the inner, we have the inner struts that house the roof racks on top. Uh, you might not be able to see that too well, but they're there. They're rated for 150 kilos. Where we have the roof racks on top there. Hope you can see that on both sides, which will house a rooftop tent eventually one day. Um, I think this setup's gonna be really good I hope you guys got something out of this. You don't need to go and spend a lot of money to do something simple for the back of your car to go overlanding or traveling around Australia. Um, I probably spent about $120 all up for this with the wood, the screws, the rivets, that sort of stuff. I think the most expensive thing out of this whole thing was this bloody collapsible sink, which is 50 bucks. Um, I wanna say thanks to JC down at Muffler Mart for, service, for servicing the car. He's put in a new exhaust manifold, four new glow plugs, and also changed all my fan belts. I wanna say thanks to ARB for doing all the work to the canopy. It really needed it and it's just awesome. I can't wait to go away in it. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Um, just sort of let you know. And that's it guys. So I hope you've got something out of this video and like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.